tonight, there's a waxing gibbous moon. So that means our choices of things to look at in the night sky are the waxing gibbous moon, double stars, planets if any are available, or star clusters or globular clusters. So tonight, let's look at a globular cluster. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about observing M13, or Messier 13, the great globular cluster in Hercules, also known as the Hercules Cluster, also known as the Keystone Cluster. We're going to be observing it with a pair of binoculars, with a medium-sized telescope, and with a large telescope, Artemis. M13, or Messier 13, was discovered in 1714 by Edmund Haley, and it's thought of as the most spectacular globular cluster in the Northern Hemisphere, and one of the most spectacular objects in the entire night sky. It's composed of several hundred thousands of stars. It has an apparent magnitude of 5.8, and can be seen even from light-polluted urban areas. It can be seen with binoculars and even with the naked eye on a dark moonless night with good transparency from a very dark sky site. It's located in the constellation Hercules and it's best viewed from about May to October. It's 22,000 light years away and is thought to be about 12 billion years old. In binoculars, it will appear as a round patch of light and in a four inch or bigger telescope, you can make out individual stars in the outer perimeter. And with a large telescope, you can resolve stars all the way to the center. So you can see it's still light out and that's not the moon, although the moon is washing out everything, which is why we're not gonna look at a galaxy. I wanted to make this about M101, but <laughs> you can't see it with the waxing gibbous moon. So we're gonna look at this globular cluster and I'm gonna sketch it and sketch it as it appears in the binoculars in a six inch refractor and in my 12 inch schmidt cassegrain telescope. And I'm not making this video at the request of anyone, but it is, <laughs> Uh, comes about because one of the viewers uh, thought that I could improve upon my sketches. So I hope to do that in this episode. I'm going to sketch them with a graphite pencil on white paper and then reverse the image. And hopefully they will meet all of y'all's expectations. And we'll give you a good idea of what this object will look like, whether you're looking with binoculars, a medium telescope, or a large telescope. So it's not nearly dark enough yet, so let's have a look at Venus. <laughs> there is one planet uh, available tonight, and it's a good time to look at it because Venus is approaching its thin crescent phase. So let's have a look at that in uh, this telescope. There's Venus. Oh, it's really cool. Wow. It's getting thinner and thinner. It's really cool. Wow, that was really cool. Now, to find M13, you're going to find Vega, the brightest star in Lyra the Harp, and the top of the Summer Triangle. And you're going to find Arcturus, the orange star in Bootes that you arc to from the handle of the Big Dipper. And you want to go two thirds of the way from Arcturus towards Vega. And that's where you'll find the trapezoid or keystone that makes up the main part of Hercules. And that's where we're going to find M13. You want to look for the two stars that make up the northwest corner and the southwest corner. corner. Eta Hercules and Zeta Hercules. M13 is closer to Eta, so you want to go about a third of the way from Eta Hercules towards Zeta Hercules, and that's where you'll find M13. Let's go have a look first 
with a pair of 15 by uh, 70 binoculars. The waxing gibbous moon does look good in 15 by 70 binoculars, but let's see what M13, the Hercules cluster, looks like in these binoculars. This is one time when I'm really grateful to have this bulky <laughs> tripod because M13 is practically at the zenith, and this allows you to look at the zenith. And so I have it in here. Oh. And with the moon so bright, I've definitely seen it better, but I can still see it. So that tells you how bright it is, even with the waxing gibbous moon. It looks like a, a round, hazy patch. You won't be able to resolve any of the individual stars with binoculars, but you can see it. It's that bright, so pretty cool. Binocular object. Now we're in Sula's observatory where I have permanently housed my six inch refractor because now we're gonna look at M13 through a six inch refractor. And if you're wondering why I have not made any videos from my new observatory, I'll explain in a separate video. But right now, let's look at M13 through a six inch refractor. <laughs> it's at the zenith, uh, like I said, so I have to get on the ground to look through it and then I'm going to sketch it. It's very cool and I can make out stars on the perimeter and it's very cool. And it looks even better since I turned off those awful lights. And it will look even better if you look at it when there's no waxing gibbous moon. But you can still see it quite well, even on a waxing gibbous moon night. I would say my eyepiece is about a foot off the floor. So as for sketching it from this position, I'll do my best, but it, it's not ideal. <laughs> I had been using a 24 millimeter eyepiece, but I put in a Teleview 11 millimeter Plossel. Oh my God, it's spectacular. And now for the grandmama of them all. Let's look at M13 through Artemis, my 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. Biggest telescope I have. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal, even with this horrible <laughs> camera light and with a waxing gibbous moon, I can resolve so many stars. It's gonna be even better when I turn that light off. And I'm gonna pump up the magnification. It's incredible. I, I can't even explain it. My little pathetic sketch will not do it justice, I know. It's just incredible. This viewing position is definitely more comfortable than the refractor, but with the Schmidt Cassegrain, you have to watch out for bumping your headlamp on the top of the telescope. But, oh my goodness, this could quite possibly be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And this looks better than any photograph I've ever seen of M13. This is phenomenal. It's magnificent. Okay, I've finished my sketch of M13 through my 12-inch Mick Cassegrain Artemis. I hope you like it. I hope you approve. It's just phenomenal. It's magnificent. So 
I hope you get a chance to see it too. And so that's it for this episode about M13, the Hercules Cluster. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.